Today it's time to replace my six-year-old Samsung Curve TV with this, the LG OLED 48C1 Ultra HD TV, optimized for gaming with low latency, response 4K, 120 frames per second gaming. Hey, I'm expecting big things. This is a significant leap from my old TV. So let's do an unboxing, set it up, see what it's all about. Let's get to it. So as I said, this is the LG OLED 48C1. It's a self-lit OLED, 100% color fidelity. Um, A9 generation four AI processor with AI Picture Pro, AI Sound Pro, ThinkQ AI, home dashboard, true cinema experience with Dolby Vision, Dolby Atmos, HDR10 Pro, filmmaker mode, it's Netflix, Apple TV, Prime Video, ultimate gameplay with its game optimizer, Variable refresh rate, ALLM, ER connection, and H gig. So as I mentioned, it works with Apple AirPlay. Uh, they've partnered here with NVIDIA G-Sync, AMD FreeSync, and it also works as part of your Apple HomeKit. And it's a 2021 new 48 inch, 121 centimeter LG TV. in the box. So at the back, you've got a LAN port, obviously a headphone in socket here. You've also got a digital audio out as well. As I said, there's the LAN port there, the internet connection if you want to connect directly. Then you've got either an antenna or a cable. Then you've got your 4K at 120 Hertz uh, HDMI in and two USB slots here. And then down the side, got another three HDMI 4K 120 Hertz slots uh, and another USB slot as well. And then at the back here, you've got sort of a cable tidy. If you've got it on the stand, you put the cables in there and then that fits neatly on the top. And then you can visa mount it as well with the various visa mounts if you've got one here. The setup process is fairly straight on, just a case of just switching it on, letting it know that your remote is working and everything's cool within that regard. And it takes you through the installation process. One thing that's quite interesting about the uh, installation, you either sort of set up using a mobile device or set up via the TV. Uh, it's up to you, so it gives you those options as well. It asks you early on to plug everything in uh, that you've got so that it can go through its own process. Once you've accepted the terms and conditions, it can go through its own process of trying to recognize what you've plugged into the TV. So it does this user analysis. Once it's gone through its user analysis, for instance, here it instantly recognized there was an Xbox One game console connected. It basically goes through uh, that and also then asks you whether you have a set top box or you're just gonna get the TV straight through the television as it were. And also whether you're gonna wall mount it or have it on its stand. And then it has various AI functions here, AI Picture Pro and AI Sound Pro. So it kind of will adapt the TVs sort of, you know, using AI to kind of suit the best picture quality depending on what you're watching. 
and then uh, just straightforward tuning process, depending whether you have uh, it connected by antenna, cable, or satellite. And then signing in as well, and many of the different things, signing in with Google, for instance, you could just use a QR code and you were straight in, no problems uh, at all at doing that and using that process. Once that's done, obviously it's a case of just um, loading up the apps that you want. And obviously it gives you a first few initial uh, pre-installed apps that they have. And again, you're going to have to go through the signing in process, but it's fairly uh, pain-free, especially if you're using a phone and a QR code method. It's easy to sign into your various apps like Amazon Prime and Disney and Netflix and all of that. And then it'll install all the latest versions of those apps for you. And, you know, there you go. You sort of straight in and you can start signing into the various apps that you've got. As I say, you can either use QR codes on your phone, makes the process very straightforward rather than having to use the little controller to put in the individual data. And then you set up LG's Google Assistant as well, and it'll kind of tell you the weather and things like that. But overall, as I say, straight off, I could just tell from the um, web OS version of their Netflix app, um, it was very smooth. And then you can see it's recognized various things at the bottom as well. This is the Chromecast with Google TV. Uh, that I've got plugged in. Strangely enough, it thought this was an Apple uh, device. That was very weird, very ironic, I thought, um, that when I plugged it in and it did its sort of uh, processes, it thought, oh, you've got an Apple connected. If you've not had an OLED before, you'll really notice the difference. That's because the OLED has millions of self-lit pixels capable of producing perfect black and accurate color. The result is really quite an impressive viewing experience. The blacks are really inky black. Um, global testing agency Intertech has confirmed that the LG OLED displays have 100% color fidelity. You'll see my old TV here in the corner, just an example. It offers a pin sharp picture with hardly any bezel as well around the edge. You really feel you're, you're getting the full picture. But as a TV for gaming, the LG really comes into its own. LG have partnered with NVIDIA and AMD to make the LG OLED TV the only G-Sync and AMD FreeSync premium certified TV. And on top of that, it's optimized for Xbox. Uh, and LG have joined forces with Xbox, as they say, to unleash the full potential of next-gen gaming. Though I'm playing this on an Xbox One X, not a Series X. Once it recognized the Xbox was connected, it automatically calibrated the Xbox and changed the game mode. As I say, bear in mind, I'm playing this on Xbox One X, but you could just see the quality there. You know, here's a kind of relatively sort of dull gray summer's day in Forza Horizon. And, you know, you can see in the reflections on the back of the lovely little mini that I'm driving, very similar to my own mini in real life. Um, the shadows and the pictures and the reflections and the detail and the smoothness of the picture um, are really, really great. And of course, you know, you've got real low latency in terms of controller response and, and the images. And it, it just plays and handles really, really beautiful, as you can see. And, you know, it's going to look even better on an Xbox Series X or a PlayStation 5, of course. But it's not just Xbox in which games look awesome. I play Stadia through the Chromecast with Google TV. Of course, there's a Stadia, LG Stadia, Stadia web OS app coming. So I'm looking forward to that. But even on Stadia, the colors really, really popped, especially on games that we know that have optimized really well for Stadia. Things like Doom Eternal and Division 2. As you can see here in Doom Eternal, uh, once I get out this main door here, the colors and, and the vibrancy of the picture just really kind of stood out for me. Again, I'm not sure that my camera filming the TV screen here is doing this um, justice because the camera is going to kind of white out on some bits. But you can see in there the kind of the yellow when he was shot um, of the sort of the gunfire, as it were, here. And you'll see here really bright yellow and the blood reds and stuff and the silvers and the greys uh, really pop um, out. It, I was just... And Doom Eternal on Stadia is an incredible port anyway, and it looks amazing and plays amazing as well, responsibly wise. But as you can see here, the colors, the details, everything 
I mean, it just does make... I mean, Stadia is impressive anyway uh, when you stop and think about it, but this LG TV makes it look even more impressive. Uh, so I was, you know, absolutely thrilled because obviously I play most of my games via Stadia. And then, of course, another great game on Stadia is the uh, Division 2. And here, perfect way of showing off Division 2 because it's a wet, rainy day in Washington, D.C., and you can see the reflections and the puddles um, and the sort of the, the black elements within those puddles and reflections um, and the shininess of the kind of damp surface of that metal um, in the road and there. I mean, it's, you know, amazing. This is just in 4K 60 frames per second. But as I say, the picture quality, even on something like, you know, as I say, on Stadia is absolutely uh, amazing. I mean, if I'm brutally honest, even a potato game like PUBG, which I also played, uh, which also always looks pretty, uh, not particularly well optimized anyway, but even a game like PUBG um, really popped in terms of color and detail in a way that it hadn't done on my previous Samsung TV. So yeah, gaming uh, really, really impressed. And then I've noticed even on normal apps, I mean, this is, you know, YouTube, here's me on YouTube and the picture quality, uh, you know, looks awesome. I didn't know my camera was that good uh, filming, filming me here. So your, even your experience on apps like YouTube, where the, if the quality of the content is up there, you really get a kind of an enhanced uh, sense of the kind of visuals and everything. And here's a kind of a 4K video from... Uh, YouTube playing and again I just was showing this because there's some real dark patches and real light patches and if anything my camera can't actually keep up to the kind of standards of the TV uh, it's whiting out some of the whites and the TV it's not like that at all it's just real vi bright and vibrant uh, picture quality and when in game mode you can tap the settings button and a little on-screen indicator pops up and you can see how the game mode has optimized your gaming picture and you can tweak accordingly. And it even has separate settings depending on the type of game you're playing, whether it's a first person sh shooter, an RPG, et cetera, et cetera. As I said, in terms of TV and film viewing, the addition of Dolby Atmos and Dolby Vision means that any content you watch that has that in there written into their metadata, it will instantly switch on. And the same is true if filmmaker mode is included in the content that you're watching. Filmmaker mode is very similar to cinema mode it turns off the motion smoothing while preserving the original aspect ratios, colors, and frame rates that the director's sort of vision originally had. This actually delivers that director's original vision. So you experience the film the way they intended. If I'm honest, the TV is so feature rich, I could do a whole separate video on all the various modes and settings. Let me know down in the comments below if you'd like to see that. But overall, I'm super impressed with the TV. The picture quality across the board is excellent. And playback on things like Netflix, Disney, and even YouTube, the quality, especially of the LG apps themselves, uh, is really, really good. I found the audio can vary depending on the content. Um, but again, loads of options in the settings for this. So it can vary whether uh, it's sort of optimized for Dolby Pro or things like that. And then you go to another output that isn't Dolby Pro and you find you're having to kind of adjust the, you know, the settings kind of, it suddenly might be more loud than you expect. But as I said, I bought this particularly because of its gaming credentials. And if you're one of the lucky few with a PS5 or Xbox Series X, etc., then absolutely this TV is for you. Thanks to the fact that it's 120 Hertz 4K TV. So you really get the benefit of those games that come in 4K 120 frames per second that the current gen consoles can offer. And that's rare in TVs. And with LG supporting their own WebOS Stadia app later this year, for me, it's just an awesome package. So there you go, the LG OLED C1, a great range of televisions from LG. I've been really enjoying this TV over the last couple of weeks. The picture quality is really, really amazing and it is brilliant for watching movies. But where this television really comes into its own is when it comes to gaming, with its 120 hertz fresh rate allowing you to play games at 4K, 120 frames per second. 
In fact, I recently saw a video with Linus Tech Tips and he was using the LG OLED CX, the previous model to this one, as his actual gaming monitor. It's that good of a gaming TV. Anyway, there you go. I hope you found this useful. I hope you found it interesting. If you did, then please hit those likes because I like it, YouTube likes it, and it helps people like you find content like this. Hey, and if you're new to my channel, then Yokoso Aragata Gazamas, do me the massive favor of hitting that subscribe button, toggling that notification bell, so you know when I go live with content like this. Thank you for spending your time with me, and I'll see you around very, very soon. Cheers.